At the end of the last video we saw an example of a permutation which was not a cycle, but we noted that it could be written as a product or composition of two disjoint cycles. In this video we're going to explore the general result that any permutation in SM can be written as a composition or a product of disjoint cycles. Here's the statement of the theorem. As you can see it says that every permutation S in Sn, so every permutation of the set 1, 2, 3 up to n, is equal to a product of disjoint cycles. Writing this proof out properly takes a lot of time, so I'm not going to do it in the lecture. If you'd like to see it written down, you can find it in the online notes for this section. What I will do is try and explain why this is true by drawing a picture. So I'm going to draw the usual kind of diagram that I draw for permutations which is that we're going to draw some dots here, and each of these dots represents one of the numbers between 1 and n, whatever n has to, happens to be. And we're then going to draw some arrows between these dots, and the arrows represent where our permutation sends one of the numbers. So for example, if we had a permutation, if we had a dot representing the number 1, then we draw an arrow from that dot to s of 1. So let's do that. We pick any dot at all. It doesn't matter which. I'm not even going to label it. And we look, we draw in the arrow for where the permutation sends that dot. I mean, let's say it's here. And we keep going. So we can ask where does the permutation send the next dot. So maybe it sends it here. OK, keep going. Maybe the next one goes over here, something like this. And we can keep on doing this. But we only have finitely many dots here because we're talking about permutations of the set 1, 2, 3 up to n. So eventually, as we continue this arrow drawing procedure, eventually we have to revisit a dot that we've already seen. So the question I'm going to ask is, could it be that the first time we revisit a dot we've already seen, we do something like this? So actually that's not possible, um, and what I'd like you to do is think, pause the video now and think about why that's not possible. Okay, I hope you did this. The reason that's not possible is because a function with a diagram like this would not be one-to-one. -one. You can see that this thing witnesses a failure of the function to be one-to-one. -one. There are two different dots which are function s sends to the same place. It's not one-to-one. -one. But our function is supposed to be a permutation. It's a bijection, and in particular it's one-to-one. -one. So I have to undo that bit of drawing. And in fact, the first time I repeat myself, what it must look like is that we must repeat ourselves by going back to the start of our chain. So what's this? Well, this is a picture of a cycle. And now we can continue the same game. So maybe we start somewhere else. We start with here, for example. And we draw an arrow for where this goes to. And now we can't get involved with any of the first things in the first cycle, because if we hit any of the things in the first cycle, then that would show that our function was not one-to-one. -one. But it is one-to-one. -one. It's a permutation. So it's a bijection. So it's one-to-one. -one. So we could make the same argument and we must have something going on like this. And when we first get back to where we started, I missed off a dot there. When we first revisit where we started, we must go back to here. So there are two disjoint cycles. And we could now simply continue this procedure. So perhaps this thing gets sent to itself. That's a one cycle. Perhaps this thing gets sent down another color. Perhaps this thing gets sent down here and then that is sent back there in a two cycle. Okay, you get the picture. Um, what this picture shows us is that this permutation must be made up of a collection of disjoint cycles. And as I say, if you'd like to see a rigorous proof of this written down, then you can find that in the online notes. I'm not going to do it here. So let's look at a way of formalizing the idea we had on the previous page of how to actually find the disjoint cycles in a permutation given to us as a um, 
in its two row notation form, for example. So if you have a permutation f in Sn, and you want to write f in Sn as a product of disjoint cycles, you can do the same procedure that we did uh, diagrammatically on the last slide, which was you choose a number which you haven't yet put into a cycle, and you find where the function sends that number. So perhaps uh, we start off with the number m, well then it goes to f of m, and then if you do f again, you go to f of f of m, and then you go to f of f of f of m, and you keep doing this until you get back to where you started, until you get back to m. That will be one of the cycles whose product is equal to f. Now, at step three, if there are any numbers which you haven't yet put in a cycle, then you pick one, and you go back to step one, and you pick one, and you just do the whole thing again. Let's see how that works in an example here. So I've given the two-row notation of a permutation f there, and we're going to express f as a product of disjoint cycles. So the number, we'll pick a number, um, we're doing step one, we'll pick a number which we haven't yet got in a cycle, we may as well choose one, so let's do that. So one went to seven. What happens to seven? So we apply f again, seven goes to four. And if we look what happens to 4, you can see that 4 goes back to 1 again. So there's our first cycle. Let's write it down. 1, 7, 4. But I haven't finished because there are numbers which don't yet belong to a cycle. So the next one we could pick, let's pick 2. It doesn't matter which one we pick, but 2 is a number which isn't in a cycle yet. And you can see from the two-row notation, 2 goes to 6, 6 goes to 5 and 5 goes back to 2 again. So we've completed another cycle. 2, 6, 5. Uh, we've not yet seen all the numbers because we haven't seen 3 yet. So let's move on to 3. Uh, 3 is sent by f to 3. That's in a 1 cycle. And now we have exhausted all of the numbers. So that is an expression for f as a product or composition of disjoint cycles. Remember what this notation means. When I write two permutations next to each other, what I mean is the composition of those permutations. So this is the permutation which is obtained by composing those three cycles. And you should also remember that any one cycle is actually equal to the identity. So we normally don't write them because of the confusion they cause. They look a bit like evaluating a permutation at a particular input here at the input 3. So because it's a bit confusing, we normally just don't write any one cycles. And it doesn't affect anything if we omit, if we omit them because they are equal to the identity, and composing with the identity doesn't do anything. OK, let's now do some compositions. So we know that the composition of two permutations is a permutation again. So let's work out in disjoint cycle form, so as a product of disjoint cycles, what we get when we compose these two permutations, which are both cycles. So you can see um, that they're not, um, not disjoint cycles. They both have one, for example. So it's a good question to ask, um, how can you express this composition as a product of disjoint cycles. And the number one most important thing to do is to remember what's the definition of a composition. If you have f composed with g, so here's my f, and here's my g, that means do g then do f, right? g happens first. If you don't remember this, your answers will be wrong because, as we've seen, the order in which you compose permutations makes a difference. Permutation composition is not commutative. OK, well, what we want to do is um, work out this product as um, to express this composition of two permutations as a product of disjoint cycles. We can do it just using the same method we've already seen. We simply start with a number and then see where the composition sends that number and then see where the composition sends that number, and so on, until we've gone round in a cycle. 
So let's just begin by writing down the left hand end of a cycle, so a bracket, and then the first number, the number in our first cycle, which will be 1, and see what happens. So where does G send 1? G sends 1 to 7, and then F sends 7 to 3. So their composition will send 1 to 3. Now let's ask what happens to 3. G sends 3 to 3 because 3 doesn't appear in the cycle of G. And then F sends 3 to 6. So we have 1, 3, 6. Now let's ask where the composition sends 6. G sends 6 to 8 and then F sends 8 back to 1. So we've gone back to 1. That means we've completed a cycle. OK, moving on, let's work out another one. So a number which doesn't yet appear in a cycle is 2. So let's do 2. G sends 2 to 4. And then F sends 4 to 4 because 4 isn't in the cycle F. G sends 4 to 5. And F sends 5 to 5 because 5 isn't in the cycle F. G sends 5 to 6, and F sends 6 to 2. 2 is the start of the cycle, so we should close off another cycle and start a third one. The well, What number have we not yet seen? We've not yet seen a 7, so let's take a 7. G sends 7 to 2, and F sends 2 to 8. G sends 8 to 1. And then F sends 1 to 7, so we've gone round in a cycle again. We can close this one off. And now we've exhausted all the numbers here. There are only the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and each one of them appears in a cycle, so we're done. So this method can be used to obtain the a disjoint cycle decomposition. So what that means is just an expression like this one for your permutation as a product of disjoint cycles for any composition you like.